One more to go. Let's just do it. You can do it. Put your back into it. I can do it. Put your back into it. Put your back into it. Click, click, boom. Hey guys, it's me, Tung, and today we're going to just uh, keep it casual and I just want to keep it light. I just want to talk about the GFX 50R. There's a lot to like about the camera and also a lot of, to dislike. This is going to be my review of the camera and also um, just my thoughts and experiences with this camera and why I traded it away for a Fujifilm X-T3 and some lenses. I know, I did that. I don't know if I regret it yet. I don't know, we'll see. There's a lot to uh, like about the camera and also a lot to dislike. I, bu I bought this camera like probably a year and a half ago. Obviously I don't have it anymore because you would, you would see it in the video. But again, I just want to talk about my overall experience uh, experiences with this camera and at the end of the day why I traded it. But I just want to start off by saying how I got into the GFX system. A few years ago, Fujifilm loaned me the GFX 50S to try and just playing around with the camera and looking through that viewfinder, I knew that the GFX has that look. And I think it's the medium format look or the large format is what Fujifilm likes to call it. It has a look and it is beautiful. The image quality coming out of the sensor is the best I have ever seen. And because uh, Fujifilm loaned it to me for a week, I was hooked. I told myself that I'm going to buy one in the future and the GFX 50R was announced. It was more affordable, about a thousand dollars less. And I said, yes, I'm going to buy it. Fast forward to when I was living in Hawaii for a year, I bought the camera. I bought the camera, I had to wait because it was back ordered. It came like after Christmas. I think with the winter sale, I got the GFX 54R with a 63 millimeter f2.8 for around $5,500. I basically got the lens for free. I was excited. It was one of my dream camera I had set out to get. I got it. I took it everywhere with me. It went around during my travels, but once the honeymoon phase was over, there were a few gripes I had with this camera. Ooh. First issue was the ergonomics. This thing was huge, clunky. Although looking at it, you think it there's some weight to it, but there isn't. It's, it gets quite light, but the ergonomics wasn't as good as the GFX 50S. I noticed that the, as the day goes by, my hands would just get tired holding on to it. Now, I would like to say when it comes to uh, tech stuff, for me anyways, I like to have the best of the best. I like to be an early adopter and being an early adopter comes with a price. You're usually guinea pigs. You're usually the one that has to work through the quirks and the kinks of the camera. And the one thing I didn't like about the GFX 50R was its slow autofocusing. That thing was slower than pouring molasses. <laughs> Boy, it was just so hard to autofocus, especially with moving subjects. When I was shooting portraits with it, I had to tell my subjects to stay real still because of, of the nature of it being a medium format. Slow to focus, sometimes it just hunts and I would miss uh, focus more times because of its slow system. It's nowhere as quick as the X-T3 and X-T4 system. The size and weight became an issue for me during traveling. I didn't take it out to use on my recent trip because I was just so deterred from it. Lugging around 20 plus pounds of gear on your back will do that to you. I didn't want to take photos by the end of the trip. I just left it inside because it was big and clunky and obviously it's not as big as a DSLR but enough for it to wear me down. And when I got home to Toronto, I barely used it at all. I guess it just scared me off from shooting and I don't know why because it is an amazing camera when it wants to be or when when I want it to be. Let's talk about the one thing that this thing does really really well and why it's the reason I fell in love with the system and that is the image quality. The best image quality hands down I've seen from a camera. I am just in love with it. The colors, the depth of field, the medium format look, there is magic when you open up a GFX RAW file and every time I look at my old photos, my feelings, my positive experiences, just comes rushing back and I'm left wondering why I created it in the first place. Surely the ultimate image quality was enough, right? That's what I thought, but I feel like the GFX 50R came out at a weird time in my opinion. I got the GFX uh, 50R right before the X-T3 was announced. What I really wanted was a good firmware out update that would allow a GFX 50R user to get the latest uh, film simulation. At the time it was Eterna. I feel that if we paid so much money for our cameras, at least we should get is those film simulations 
and faster autofocusing. But it's not until a few months ago there was a significant up firmware update to the GFX 50R. And it's because they were busy pushing their GFX 100 line. So the GFX 50R was sandwiched in between the X-T3 and the GFX 1. Uh, 100. I guess Fujifilm focused their attention on those two cameras and kind of left this one in the back, which I find isn't that cool. And that's one of the reasons wh why I traded my GFX away. I felt Fujifilm wasn't taking care of this line and it would take Fujifilm almost a year and a half to get the firmware updates. There was also a lack of lens options available for the native GFX lines. If there was some faster options available, it probably make me want to stay. But if you're a product shooter and you're shooting stuff that doesn't require the fast paced action blazing autofocus and you care about the ultimate image quality, I think the GFX system is amazing. I just love the quality that comes out of this, this sensor, this camera. When you're an early adopter, you pay, you definitely pay for these things. There are still a lot of quirks and kinks to uh, work out. It may sound like I am bashing this camera, but I only bash because I care. Honestly, I thought the GFX 50R was enough camera for me. Factor in that I'm the type of person that likes the latest and greatest uh, new toy. It makes the GFX 50R looks obsolete when newer cameras were coming out with faster specs. And it made fi the 50R look like a piece of shit, but it's not. Like all these cameras started to come out all at once. The Canon 50 EOS R came out and I believe the Sony a7R 4 came out with the 60 megapixels and all I wanted from Fuji is firmware updates to keep the GFX 50R refreshed and up to date as much as possible. So in the future what Fujifilm needs to do is they need to put out constant updates like they do with their Fuji X system and take care of their medium format customers. I love the GFX system so much that's why I'm making this video. I, it's because I care. I would love to see this lens lineup mature out. I'm probably going to wait until there's a Mark II of the GFX 50R or a Mark II of the S. With faster autofocusing speed, I know Fujifilm can do it. It's done on the GFX 100S. Better ergonomics with the GFX 50R. Probably shave off some of that design. Perhaps then I would probably go back to that system again because man that image quality though it's like none that i've seen before it's so good and don't get me wrong guys the gfx uh, is a fun system to use even with quirks it was very awesome i enjoyed the time i had with it i love love it so much but again i felt it came out came out at a weird time when they were getting ready to push the xt3 and developing their gfx 100 line i can't see i can't wait to see what the mark ii has in store for their gfx line i'm going to look very closely and hopefully get back into it because man image quality though